In this video, we're going to expand on the last tutorial where we created a desktop app or an animation where we could play a drum kit with a whole bunch of different sounds. All we had to do was click on the cymbals or the drums to play that particular sound. I'll just quickly give you a listen to that. Just take my headphones off. Here we go. Okay, so that's how our drum kit sounded in the previous tutorial. We're going to make something very similar though. And this time it's going to be for Android mobile devices. In particular, I'll be using my Android phone, so my Samsung Galaxy today. And we're going to make this drum kit work on that. Okay, so I'll just close that example off. And I'm going to head over to Flash. And this time, instead of making a new ActionScript file, I'm going to go to Air for Android. Okay, we're going to use that. And if I go to Fit in Window, you can see roughly what your mobile phone screen is going to look like. Now for the drum kit, I want to have it in landscape format, so have the phone twisted on its side. So to change my stage here, I'm going to go over to this target option in my properties box, where it says Air for Android, hit the little tool next to it so you can change the settings, and we're going to change the aspect ratio here to landscape. And just click on OK. After that, I want you to change the sizes. We're just going to switch them around. So I'm going to go, instead of 480, by 800, it's going to be 800 by 480. And there's my new landscape format for my Android app. I'm just going to go back to the zoom and fit it in the window so we get a clearer view of it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is bring into our library all the bits and pieces that we need to make this app work. So that's all the sounds and the picture of the drum kit. So from your file menu, go down to import and then import to library. From there, we're going to highlight all the different sounds. There's all the sounds of the drums. And I'm also going to get this picture of the drum kit. And I'm going to open them up. OK, and you'll see that they do all appear in our library in our um, right-hand panel here. OK, if I click on Crash, you can see the sound file for that. If I click on Drum Kit, there's the picture. While I'm on the drum kit, I'm going to simply drag it out of my library and dump it on my stage up here. Okay. If you remember from the previous tutorial, our drum only had the two, three toms sorry, and the snare. We didn't use tom 4, so we need to get rid of that again. So simply right-click on that picture and break it apart. And using your eraser tool, just rub over the top of that tom 4. It's going to be a little bit messy. Just don't delete any of the other drums. Oops. There we go. That was a bit better. Once you're done, just press Control A to select all again, and then Control G to group it together. Okay, and you can use the free transform tool now from your toolbox just to stretch that out. I'm holding Shift when I stretch it as well, just to keep it in proportion. Okay, we don't want to make it too much bigger. We don't want it to be off the edge of our app. That looks pretty good. I'll just press Control Enter just to test that to see how it's going to look. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is lock, I'll oh, actually rename that layer to drum kit, and then I'll lock it into place. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is start making the sounds work for the drum kit. So the first sound that I'm going to do is the drum that's right on the bottom of everything, and that's the kick drum, so that big orange drum at the bottom. I'm going to get that sound working by grabbing my rectangle tool from my toolbox, going into properties and ensuring I've got a bright fill color, and I'm simply going to make a new layer called kick and I'm going to draw roughly where I think that kick drum goes it is behind everything else but that's roughly how big it's going to be after that I'm going to grab my black arrow so the selection tool from my toolbox click on that kick drum shape go up to modify and convert it to a symbol now in here I'm going to give it the name kick and the type needs to be a button and click OK now this is a button that we're going to be able to push on with our finger and when we do push on that button, it's going to play the sound of the kick drum. So, to bring in that sound, we need to double click on this pink button, and that will open up the button timeline. A little bit different to your usual timeline. Now, the state that we're concerned with is the down state. So, when we press our finger down on this button, we want to play the sound. So, underneath the down state, click in the box and press F6 to put in a keyframe. Now, just go across to your properties, and under the sound panel here, select the kick drum sound, so it's called kick. Okay, 
and you can see in your timeline a little orange sound wave has appeared that's basically that sound wave there just down there so when we press our finger down on that shape it will play the sound of the kick drum I'll press the back arrow now to take me back to the scene Okay. We can just test that out now by pressing Control Enter, and we'll see if this is going to work. I'll take my headphones off again, so it's just so you can hear it. Okay, so I'll press on this. It's a very soft sound, but it is working. Okay, so I'll just close that example off. And the one issue we've got is this um, big box is in the way of the kick drum. So what we're going to do is just turn it transparent. So it's still going to be there. We just won't be able to see it. So click on it with your black arrow, in your properties panel, go down to color effect, change the style to alpha, and make sure you set it to 0%. Okay, so just scroll that little lever down to 0%. So you can see that our kick drum is still there, it's just transparent. And when we play that now, we're going to be able to push on that, and it will play the sound, but we just won't be able to see that pink box. So that's our kick drum all done. So I'm going to lock that layer, and make another new layer now. So the next one I'm going to bring in, I might do the snare drum, it seems to be the next one up in the list, so I'll rename layer 3 to snare, grab my oval tool, hold alt and shift again, and from the middle of that drum I'm going to click and drag out and cover the snare drum. And I'll do exactly the same as I just did. Click on that shape with my black arrow, I'm going to modify and convert it to a symbol, I'll call it snare, ensure it's a button, and click OK. Once it's a button, double click on it. Into the button timeline, go to the down state and press F6. That puts a keyframe in. And the sound you want is the sound of the snare. Just simply press back. Change the color effect to alpha. And make it 0%. That's the snare drum all done. I'll just keep working through these quickly. I'll just work my way around all the different drums. I'll do Tom 1 next. Now you can fast forward through the video if you know what you're doing here. You don't have to watch me do all these. I'll try not to take too long. So modify, convert to symbol. Tom 1, it's a button. Double click it. Keyframe on the down state and we'll play Tom 1 sound. Back. Change the alpha to 0% and that one's done. Let's do the same for Tom 2. Tom 2. Hold Alt and Shift. Put it to a symbol. Tom two. And we'll change the alpha. Okay, so Tom two is done. Next layer, we're going to do Tom three. Close enough, might be able to click on that and just nudge it back across a little bit. Okay, I'll convert that to a symbol. Tom 3. We'll put on the sound of Tom 3. And change the alpha to 0. Okay, so that's got my four drums there working as well as the kick drum. Now it's up to the symbols. So I'll make a new layer. We'll do the hi hat first. Grab the oval tool. It's basically the same deal. Holding Alt and Shift and just clicking and dragging out. My black arrow, I click on that first symbol, convert it to a symbol, we'll call it hi hat. It's a button. On the down state, press F6, and we're going to bring in the sound of the hi hat. Change the alpha to 0%, and that's a symbol done. Better rename that layer to hi hat. Okay, we'll lock that layer. Two more layers left. We've got the crash symbol next. I'll grab the circle. We'll convert it to a symbol. It's called crash. It's a button. We'll double click on it. Go to the down state and drop on the sound of the crash. Make it transparent, and lucky last is the ride symbol. So I'll make a new layer for the ride. Draw a circle, convert it to a symbol called ride. 
double click it, keyframe on a 6, we'll put on the sound ride, and we'll make it transparent. Okay, so that's our drum kit set up. We'll give it a quick test run by pressing Ctrl and we'll have a listen to these sounds. Okay, don't worry about that simulator that pops up, just push it to the side for the moment. Let's have a listen. Okay, so when we click on it with our mouse, everything's working. So we can assume that when we press on everything with our finger, it's going to work on our mobile device as well. So let's give it a go at getting it onto our Android device, and we'll give it a test run with our finger. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do here. First thing, we need to go over to our publish settings and get set up ready for publishing it onto our device. You can see at the top that we've got a target and it's Air for Android. I'm going to hit the settings button next to that and get it all set up. Okay, the output file I want to call drum. I might call it drum kit. The app name, we'll call it drum kit. No spaces in these names. Um, it's landscape formats version 1. We'll make it full screen so check that. We're not going to check auto orientation. So when we're in portrait mode, we don't want to have our app flip around. We just want it to stay in landscape format. Um, everything else is all good there. Across the top, we'll go to the deployment tab. And when you're starting out in Flash, you'll need to create a new digital certificate. I'm not sure what this is all about exactly, but let's go over to create and create a certificate. You can put in your name. Whatever place you work for, put it in. If you don't, just write work. I'm just going to write work. My country's AU, from Australia. Come up with a password that you're going to remember. When you create an app from now on, you're going to have to remember that password. And you need to save your digital certificate somewhere that you'll remember. So I'm just going to save it on my desktop for now. I'll give it the name certificate. Click Save and click OK. And I've already got one sitting there, so I'll just overwrite that one. And it says, certificate has been created. Okay, so that's good. Now type in that password you just came up with. Okay, it's going to allow us to publish it. Uh, going down, we don't need to touch anything else there for now. If you had little icons made up for your app, which you can easily do in Fireworks or Photoshop, or one of those programs, there's the sizes you need, and you can bring those in. I haven't done that yet for this one, but I will show you that in a future tutorial on how to make icons for your app. So basically, when it loads up on your phone, it'll have a little icon to go along with it. Permissions we don't have to touch. If you did want to give it access to the internet or the camera and so on, you can check those boxes there. Languages, well, probably does support all those, but I'll just say English since we're working on an English one for now. Um, that's about it. So I'm just going to click on OK for the minute. Okay, let's have a look around here. I um, don't think there's anything else we need to change there. So I'll just click on OK for the minute. We're not going to publish it just yet. So now that you're all finished and our published settings are all set up, let's go to File and Save As. And I'm just going to save this on my desktop as an FLA file. I'm going to call it Drum Kit App. Okay, so that's our Flash file. So we can always come back to this file and edit it as needed. Okay, what we can do now is go across to File again and we can click Publish. And if we're lucky, it's going to publish our app to our desktop where we saved it. Shouldn't take too long. Let's have a look. Publishing, publishing, publishing. Okay, so it says the APK, that's the file that we use to run on our Android devices, was packaged successfully. Don't worry about that warning, we don't care about that for now. So if I go across to my desktop, drum kit's just there. Okay, what I'm going to do is plug in my Android device now to my computer. And I'm going to right click on that APK file and just copy it. I'm going to go into my folders and go to this PC. And there's my Galaxy S5 connected to my computer. I'm going to open it up. Here's all the folders. Uh, the folder I might throw this in is probably Documents. That's probably the best spot to put it. So I'll go into Documents 
and I'll simply paste that APK file into that folder. So I've got my drumkit.apk file now on my phone. I'm going to turn my camera on and I'm going to load up my phone and you can have a look at how it works. Okay, let's try and work this camera out. Here we go. So, here's my phone. I might turn that light off so you can see this a bit clearer. Clearer. I'll open it up. I'll go into apps. Scroll across. I've got this yellow folder here that says my files. I'm going to open that up. Okay. From here, I'm going to go into device storage. And here's all my different folders. And you can see if you look closely, documents is up the top. I know it's in reverse for you there, but I'll press on that and you can see the drum.apk file. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to install it. So down the bottom there's an install button. That will just install to my phone. It says it's installed so I can click open down the bottom and up comes my drum app. Okay, so I'll turn on its side. Let's see when I press on these buttons if they're actually going to work. Okay, so I'll just flip this camera off for the minute and we will finish up. I'm going to try and work this out. There we go, so we'll head back over to Flash now. That's basically it. We've already saved it, so make sure you, if you haven't, save it one more time. And that's how we put a drum kit onto our phone and make a cool little drum kit app. Have fun working with that.